birthday money. Woo! Yes, it is. It's Wednesday morning, it's breakfast bob kekai Malino o akona Thank you, Pancho Man. Welcome to Breakfast from Kona, presented by Active, hashtag inspired to race. My name is Bob Babbitt. Our sponsors are Timex, Rudy Project, GoPro, MPA Graphics, Lava Magazine, Babbittville Radio, our next guests, training partners, teammates, Bart Arnotts and Ronnie Schilkinect. I can always say that. Ronnie Skill Connect. So good. So good. Good. Really good. I'm a professional for when it comes American. to for, for an American. You got a Belgian, you got a Swiss guy, seven time Swiss Ironman champion, you got Bart. Didn't you just win Ironman France? Yes. Yes. I did. So you guys just did a training camp together in San Diego. Had you trained a lot together before? No, not not that much. Uh, we know each other quite long from Duathlon. Yes. Um, and then since this year we are tra uh, team teammates. Yes. And uh, we share the room in uh, in a team training camp. And I think uh, it was just uh, a good opportunity to do a training camp together in San Diego, and it worked out really well. So uh, <laughs> I, th I think it was not the last time. Now, together. what what was good about training with Ronnie? I think he's, uh, he's he's a similar guy to me. Uh, we are a similar level in in bike and run. Yes. Swim, we did a bit different stuff, uh, but we are also quite a similar level. Right. Um, I think we are both quite easy going, not too not too focused the whole time. We focus, we do our job. Right. But we are not too crazy, <laughs> and uh, I think it, it worked out really well. And it's it's also a lot nicer to be together a bit. Hard to try to do this stuff on your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot harder to do it on your own. So how was he to live with? You guys have become sort of an old couple. Yeah, really. I mean, uh, no, it, that, that's really important, you know, that you get along very well. And uh, I think when we had the first camp in Mallorca, we were together in the room. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was just... Uh, really comfortable and uh, we had a lot of fun you can laugh a bit and you know the training itself is so hard so um, if you can motivate yourself and in the end of the day you can even have a laugh at the yes. table you know at the dinner table I think that's the perfect match then you know so Bart you look at the last couple of years you've gone from 11th to 8th you had the fastest run last year 244 um, coming into this year and you know even back like two years ago I think you swam like over an hour Right, you went from an hour one to 57 minutes, and for you, it's it's going to be important for you to be up a little further after the swim, yeah. so you don't have to chase so much. Yeah. What What do you think? Do you feel you've improved much in the swim this year? Yeah, in general, I improved a lot the last one and a half years. Yes. It's just in Kona last year, I still struggled. I think it's just it's the hardest swim you can imagine. I think it's in the ocean. It's one long straight line, and right. it's. Uh, Maybe also a bit of the pressure that made it uh, that I was swimming a bit under my level last year, I think. Yes. And I think, uh, yeah, I have a bit more experience now. The same in Kona, it's, it's my third time, it's not the second or the first time. So it's maybe everything is a bit more comfortable. And I, I'm maybe a bit more focused and relaxed uh, during the start. And I hope right. I can swim at my level. And then usually I should be a little bit closer to the front than last year. but. You never know either. That'd be scary for the other guys if you're a little closer to the front. <laughs> so, Ronnie, you're a guy who finished fourth here. And when you finish fourth or eighth, in Bart's case, all of a sudden people start talking about you potentially winning the race. Yeah. Was coming back the year after you were fourth, was that hard? Because expectations change when you finish fourth. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's the really hard thing. I mean, it's great to finish fourth, but it's not getting any easier. So... Uh, you know, you come back and uh, you have a race and you feel like, ah, oh, today I don't have a good day and I'm not even in the top 15 at the moment. So, you know, everything not as good as fourth is not good. So it's right. in, the, in the head, mentally, it's quite right. hard. Yeah. And, and Bart, this year with, uh, with Ironman France, you, you know, you, you were second in Ironman Mallorca and first in Ironman France. Was, was that your first Ironman win? Yes, it was my first item. Ever. How special was that for you to win? Yes. To win because you were second the year before with a, a phenomenal run. Yeah. You ran yeah. sub 240 there. I think a phenomenal race in general, but uh, Frederick was just way, uh, not way stronger, but he was he was impressive that day. I think right. he had his best race ever, nearly. Uh, it's, it depends also on the conditions, but we had a great race last year. 
and uh, yeah, but it was not a win. And I won a couple of half Ironmans, right. but I still wanted to win uh, Ironman as well. And it's it's good that I ticked that box now, or how do you, how do you call it, the US guys? But yes. No, it's. It's okay now, I won an Ironman as well, and now there is no extra pressure to try to win an Ironman. So right. it's, uh, yeah, I achieved it already, and now I can just try to get in a few more. But uh, yeah, there, there was the, my goal for this season was to win, to try to win an Ironman. Yes. Um, and then perform yeah. well in Kona. That's, that's so, for both you guys from, from Duathlon. And for folks who, you know, they, they know that it's run, bike, run, but it, I think it's tougher to do a duathlon than it is a triathlon, right? You're starting out with a hard run and then riding and then running again. Was the transition a little easier from duathlon to triathlon than you thought it would be? Or was it, was it still pretty hard? Well, I think uh, for for us uh, it's it was not really hard, but uh, the hard thing is that you you're not a natural swimmer, so right. you have to to catch up. You have to learn uh, that sport. Uh, yeah, exactly. You have to learn a new sport, and you're you're not used to be uh, in the back of the group because in duathlon we were both pretty good front, runners. Yes, and you're up front, so that that was the biggest change. Was oh coming out of the water behind and having yeah. to ride and, through the group, being yeah. yeah have to chase right. Yeah, yeah, that's the hardest thing because your position is completely. In duathlon, if you're a good runner, you start you you, you can control the race maybe, or at yes. least uh, always uh, be in the front pack. And now we uh, we need to catch up already after the swim. It's like, it's like uh, uh, three four minutes yeah. whatever down. So it's it's different, you know. You have to really push to get into the race. And in duathlon, it's it was different for, for me and for him as well. It's the, so it's it's a different feeling and mentally maybe not easy in the beginning. Because if you're used to uh, to be always in the lead or yes. in the front, and then all of a sudden you need to make sure that you're not the last guy out of the water, <laughs> it's it's completely different. It's the opposite. So it's but it's easier to find your bike. Yeah, it's easier to find <laughs> the bike. That's, that's, that's there is only that's, one that's left. Advantage, yeah. <laughs> your <laughs> no, bike's that's right there. That's, that's, the, right that's the only there. advantage. Then, <laughs> yeah, 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 but yeah. mentally it's it's harder. Yeah. Well, the other <laughs> side of it is sometimes when you're a little further back. Because the way you've run each year and run like you were 24th or 25th off the bike last year and ran your way up into eighth place, a lot of people when they're in that lead group on the bike might go too hard and lose some of their running legs. Are you able to focus more? This is for both of you guys. Are you able to focus more on just your race because you know you might be off the back a little bit and having to work your way up? Yeah, I think it's you can focus more on your own race, but it's also mentally sometimes hard to still believe in yourself that you can get a good result in the end. Because if it's not really motivating you, that you know that there are still 30 guys in front of you, and maybe they struggle in the end, and maybe you catch them, but yes. you never know. And right. and it's mentally you need to keep pushing yourself, and it's just a race against yourself more to to try to stay focused and just push it really hard yes. but i think it's not always easy if you if you're in the lead group at least you have a motivation you know you know you you're already in a in close to a podium spot spot and right. we never know if we can uh, make the podium in the end it's only the second half of the marathon that's uh, usually yeah, the moment when you catch some guys right. and maybe believe in the uh, top 10 top 5 whatever so it's Especially for me, I think Ronnie was often in a better position than me after the bike, but right. I also struggled on the bike in Kona. So not well, both years. Both years, yeah. Both years, just yeah. so you didn't have the bike ride you thought you could have. No, no. <laughs> Yeah, I think especially in Kona, I mean, for me, I have to have patience because in any other Ironman, if I have a deficit after the swim, I go hard, catch the front group. Because but you know they're not, the field usually isn't that deep. As well, and also here the conditions, to, if you ride hard, if you're not Norman Sutler or Sebastian Keenley, uh, it's hard to ride uh, like 40 watts more for, for half an hour or an hour and then uh, settle and, back, you know. Right. And, and I think I have to be patient and... Uh, and, and wait and, and then, then catch them in the, in the run as well because uh, for me it never worked out to, to blaze through the, through the bike when I got fourth place I yes. ran pretty fast the, the, the marathon and uh, I catched all the guys uh, in the end right so by, by not by being patient on the bike by being rather, patient right yeah. But that's hard when you're coming, you're heading out to Javi and you see the race going the other way yeah it's very hard that, that must be very difficult for both you guys yep so uh, talk a little bit about growing up, okay, for, for you, Ronnie, tennis player, right? Yeah. And, and was, was uh, getting to Wimbledon, that type of thing, was that a goal or did you feel that? Yeah. Uh, um, I was first, I was uh, 
totally into soccer and yes. uh, and and tennis, and then. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, there are a lot of guys out there who have some talent, but right. uh, I always dreamed of, of going to Wimbledon, of course. Uh, yes. my, my big idol was Stefan Edberg at the time. Yes. He was a servant volley player, like really nice style, and uh, I admired him also because he was always a quiet guy on the, and very polite. And uh, yeah, Before he beat you. He, no, was one, he was the type of guy who was very polite before he beat whoever he was playing. Uh, Stefan Edberg? Yes. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think he was even polite after it as well. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Or what did you say? <laughs> uh, basically, he was a nice guy. Yeah. But when he got on the court, he was going to beat him. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. I yeah. mean, but he was always had this class. So he stayed on. Classic. Even if he beats you, he, he has some class with nice. it. Nice. So, yeah. So, you, but you remember playing Roger Federer. Yeah, that was also a good experience. Uh, but that's a long time ago. And 6-4, uh, 6-4, yeah. six, four, six, four, though. It's yeah, not yeah. bad. Yeah, it's good. Uh, it was, was fun. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I and knew. But, but Roger still would recognize you. I don't know. Maybe yes. I think he's a guy who's. Uh, I, I talked to him a few times. Yeah. So so yeah, he's he's a guy like you and me. So exactly. Of course he would. So uh, doing a training camp together, do you have a sense of what you're ready to do on race day? I mean, do you feel is it out of line for for Ronnie to win this race? Is it out of line for Bart to win this race? No, I mean for us it's clear. I mean the the question only is who is third place. I mean <laughs> one and two. I know. Yeah. I mean one and two. Right? It's one or the other. Yes. We talked about that a lot. I mean, we had a lot of time. Yes. So we are not sure which we, is we, one and which is two. We are going to make it a sprint finish. For it's gonna, so we yeah. stop at the Banyan tree about <laughs> yeah. 100 yards out. We do a little... Like, get in the track, stop, yeah, like yeah, get or, in the blocks. Or we sit down and then we talk. Who's... Who's yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love no, it. Yeah. So no. you had an opportunity to run. Bart had the fastest run here a couple times. Yeah. You had an opportunity to train with this guy. Yeah. Is he one of the best at running after you, like when you're doing your brick workouts, we're getting off the bike and running? If you, Is he one of the best? Yeah, I mean, uh, he showed in the race that he's one of the best. In training, it is, uh, it is never the same than in a race. But yeah. of course, for me, he was the benchmark. And also for me, it was really motivating to train with him to yes. see where I am at. Right. So, so I, I, yeah, of course, he was, he's, he's, he's the guy. I mean, on the run, even on the bike, I think he's, uh, some guys think he's, uh, I think he's, could, he's one of the strongest on the bike as well. He showed that in Wiesbaden 70.3 yes. as well. I mean, he, pff, yeah, he plays through that uh, 90K. So, I mean, uh, he's a biker and a runner. So, uh, he yeah. does it both. Yes. And, uh, but, how about this guy? But we are in general not, not really crazy in training. We don't do crazy hard stuff. I think we are not too impressive in training. It's, it's more the race that matters. It's not, uh, I think a lot of athletes are just training a lot harder right but it's what makes you better it's not what it's not about personal bests in, in training or whatever it's i think we'd, we both did a smart training camp and just good training session yes but not like to impress each other it's it was not like uh, to try to race each other yeah, in training we, camp yeah. to show how, how strong we are right so you I think weren't we, racing each other you yeah. had a plan each yeah, day yeah yeah exactly and we, and we did it quite smart it's about a solid block but it's not about one crazy hard session i think that's not the way to to focus on kona so uh we were not too maybe not too impressed by what we did yes but we just did a really good solid training block and this i think it's interesting years ago tim the boom and peter reed trained together and then peter reed won the race and then they didn't train together anymore because oh, really? yeah they sort of push each other because tim was like I saw that guy hurt. He won, and I finished tenth. What the heck? And so, like, they they went their separate ways. But when they were together, they trained really, really well. Yeah. So, when you guys, when one of you wins, and the other one doesn't win, we just still train together. It's always hard to talk about the future, but I I, I don't see a reason why we why we shouldn't train together another time. So it's it was now we we work really. It worked out really well and was a good opportunity to train together. And I think we because we liked it both. I think yes. we would do it for sure. Again, even if he wins and I have a bad race or the opposite, I think it doesn't matter doesn't that matter. much. No, no, no. So there's a there's a, a pretty cool heritage of for triathlon uh, from Belgium with uh, Luke Van Leerde and Frederick Van Leerde. Yeah. So, and last year when Frederick wins, uh, was that was how important was that for the country of Belgium in terms of more awareness for triathlon? 
I think it was really important because everybody was still talking about Luc van Lierde and everybody still knows him in Belgium. Yes. But triathlon was not that much in the picture anymore. No. He, he was quite big when Luc won. He got Sportsman of the Year in Belgium. Right. It's always hard for a small sport to become Sportsman of the Year. Sure. And I think since the win from Frederick last year, uh, triathlon is booming again in Belgium and especially in the media. It's More he, media. He won a lot of awards at the end of the year. Yes. So it means it means a lot if you win Kona in Belgium still. Yes. It did. It, it was the same with Luke, but it's still the same with Frederick. So if you win this race, the people start talking about triathlon a bit more again. I think the Belgian press is going to be a few more guys here in Kona this yes. year again. Before they were not always there. Yes. So I think it, it made a, it was good that the Belgian guy won again to try to get it a bit more in the media and and. I think it's it's a booming sport in general. A lot of athletes are comp competing, and new athletes want to try it, to do a triathlon. Yes. But in the media, it's not that big in, in Belgium. And I think it's in a few countries in Europe, it's similar. It's not it's not a huge sport in. Right. And I think yeah. if you have a good result here, but you need a win, I think, to <laughs> to, to that, achieve that. Yeah. What, what would it mean to you to win this race? Yeah, a lot. It's, it's the race. I think it's for, for everybody the same. It's the race where you, where you start to dream of when you get into triathlon, you think about this race straight away. Yes. Even, even I think for the short distance guys, a lot of them dream about Kona. So the Olympics is, is huge, but every triathlete is still thinking about Kona as well. And you can see the, the guys like Frodeno, Frodeno is, he's now uh, yeah. competing in long distance as well. And I think it's for every triathlete, it's a, it's a dream. It's a dream. Ronnie, you? Yeah, what, what I mean, mean for you to win? Uh, the, the the last few years I had to learn to really, uh, uh, yeah, my goals maybe, yeah, don't put them too high. So this year I'm I'm really coming to not with the real goal. I mean, of course, you dream of winning, of course, but if I look at my last Kona races, uh, I have to be honest that uh, they were not not too good. Right. And of course, I would love to have another race like in 2008, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I will not focus too much uh, on results uh, on Saturday. I just try to stay good in the head, you know, th through the whole race, and then the results will eventually follow. If I have the chance, of course, uh, I will take it. But, uh, yeah, I think uh, my aspirations this time are uh, not as high. But you have high aspirations for this guy. Yeah, of course. No, I don't want to put pressure on him, but it's the same. In the end, they're all fit here. I mean, there are ten guys who can win, or maybe six, seven. No, yeah. And, 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 uh, and uh, yeah, but uh, you can train the best, you can feel the best, but on race day, uh, yeah, the best will win. And uh, it's only one who can win. Huh? Exactly. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Bart and Ronnie, really appreciate you guys coming on. Thank Poncho you. Man. Again, this is Breakfast from Kona. We are presented by Active, hashtag Inspire to Race. Our sponsors include Timex, Rudy Project, GoPro, MPA Graphics, Lava Magazine, Babylon Radio, Poncho Man. Take us out. It's Wednesday morning. It's breakfast with Bob Kikai. Malino a Okona. Pancho Man! Woo! Thanks, boys. Thank you. We're going to take a quick photo.